Welcome to this video tutorial. I'm Melanie Grinnell, the Director of Piano Studies and the Cadence Vocal Jazz Ensemble here in the Music Department at Grossmont College. This is the final product of this tutorial. This is a lead sheet made with music notation software in MuseScore. Our basic lead sheet style features a melody, chords and lyrics, a standard four bar intro and a common four bar tag ending. Let's get started. Writing a basic lead sheet using music notation software. Other than your sheet music looking very neat and organized, one of the main advantages to using music notation software is the playback option. With the simple melody and chords we'll be entering, you will be able to hear the composition in its entirety, or even selected sections that you choose. The second advantage is easy editing. We will enter the notes and chords in the original key that are found on a standard lead sheet. We will then be able to transpose the lead sheet into our optimal key. Most musicians use music notation programs like Finale or Sibelius. For this tutorial, we will be using MuseScore. MuseScore is a free music notation and composition program. It's a downloadable program available for Windows, Mac, OS, and Linux. It has comparable features to Finale and Sibelius and supports a wide variety of file formats and input methods. So, let's get started! Okay, so let's get started. As soon as you download MuseScore and open the program, you'll get this menu, the screen of a Start Center. If you've already worked in MuseScore, you've got your recent documents here displayed in the square or this rectangle as well. But we're going to go straight for Create New Score. I know I already have the template in my background here, but just in case you're starting from scratch, this is how we get there. So you're going to create new score, and we're going to type in our information here. The composer was Harbuck, and I'm just going to put them together, composer and lyricist. Now on this next screen, it says create new score. We're going to choose the template file. I'm going to scroll down to where it says jazz. And I'm going to select Jazz Lead Sheet. Next. And the original standard um, lead sheet that I'm looking at from our book on page 15 is an E flat. So I'm going to start there. The time signature is 4 4. I do have a pickup measure. There are two beats represented here. So I'm going to put two in this little box here for duration. It's a 32 measure tune. And for tempo, I'm going to mark this here now. And this isn't as important. Um, even if you think it's too fast, we can change it later in the actual document. And then we are done. Press finish. So, time to format this page. You can see that I've got 16 measures per system. That's a little thick. And our de ideal uh, goal is to have four measures per system. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. And the way that you do that is basically click on every fourth measure. Now I wanna remind you, this first measure here, we uh, are making a pickup measure. So I'm not gonna count that. And I'm gonna go once my mouse <laughs> cooperates. One, two, <laughs> three, four. And I'm just going to press enter. And that gives me the bars that I need per system. And I'm going to go ahead and go through all of the measures this way. I'll use the mouse. Four. One, two, three, four. Enter. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and there we go. Great. Now, 
I am going to go ahead and put acknowledge that pickup bar and I'm going to click on the actual bar line that I want to be a double bar line. I went over here to my left menu under bar line and I'm going to click on this double bar line and that gives me that. Since I'm here I'm going to go ahead and mark all of the rest of the double bar lines like it does in my example. So at the end of the fourth system I also have a double bar line. And then at the end, I do have a final bar line, which is already in there for me. All right. And that is the way that you format your lead sheet. Okay, we are now ready to start entering notes. There are three main methods for entering notes. Okay, so to be in note entry mode, you can click on this note tool. And you can see when you hover, it says enter notes with a mouse or keyboard, or you can simply press N. I'm a big proponent of using keyboard shortcuts as much as I can, but I'll show you the first method. So I'm gonna click on that. And it already selects my rhythm here. Uh, the default rhythm is quarter note. Okay, so I'm going to click on the measure that I actually want, and then I'm just going to go and start. So my first two notes are B flat to B flat, and then when I change rhythmic values, I got a half note, and all I'm doing is grabbing the rhythmic value from the top of my tool icon here, my palette, if you will and just plugging things in. Dragging, I'm dragging and clicking notes on the staff, okay? I will show you how to do ties in just a minute. But let me go ahead and do that now. All right. Okay, so we've already started entering notes. And while it is pretty quick, it's a long, it's one of the longer methods on how to enter notes. Um, and it's, it's time consuming, it's tiring, and it also encourages repetitive non-range of motion. But it is the simplest way to enter notes. So if you'd like to go this route, since you're only required to do one lead sheet, um, by all means, absolutely. So in the next portion, I'm gonna show you how to enter with the keyboard. All right, the second main method of entering notes, of course, if you're familiar with a MIDI keyboard, you just simply plug in uh, to the back of your uh, device and you should be able to enter in notes with your keyboard, but this does require additional knowledge and extra equipment. Um, so that is a possibility, but that is not the method we're going to use today. The third main method for entering notes is through your keyboard. And this is the method we're gonna to use to fill out our lead sheet today, okay? So basically, the rhythmic values are placed up here in this tool palette, as I mentioned. And if you hover over these rhythms, you'll notice that there is a number in the parentheses. And that's what I'm going to use to enter for the rhythmic values that I want. Okay? You even notice that we've got some of these other items here and we will definitely go through those as well. All right, so I stopped here and I will talk about that tie in just a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and continue. So I am here in my second measure. I will talk about this measure in a little bit. The second full measure has a tie and a quarter note uh, triplets, so we'll talk about that in the next portion of the video. But I'm going to start right here where I've got a nice whole note. So the whole note is a seven. So in this method, you just do two things you press the number, and the value for whole note is a seven. If 
I already give it a here. Make sure that I'm in the actual <laughs> measure that I need to be in. All right, so I'm gonna do seven. And then I just press the letter that I need, which in this case happens to be a G. Okay, a quarter note is a five. So I'm gonna press five G. Okay, now there is a rest that I need there. I'm just gonna leave it alone. But let's say I made a mistake and pressed a G. And I'm like, oh no, 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 that is supposed to be a rest. I just go back, highlight the note that where I made the mistake and press delete and that will give me the rhythmic value in a rest. Okay, I'm still, as you can see, the quarter note is selected and now I'm just gonna enter letters now. Okay, I've got two E's. Now I'm gonna go back to this E up here and I need it up the octave. So a quick trick to go up the octave is to press Control up arrow. Okay, and now I'm gonna show you the rest of this and how fast it is. Six, G, A, five, A, quarter note triple that I'll do next time. Seven, C, five, C, and C, E. Now, here I'm on the third system already. D, D, C, C, B, B, A, A, G. G, B, A, A, G, G, F, F, E, E, 7, B. Control, arrow up. 5B, rest. Now I need a B, the lower one, so I'm gonna highlight that. Press Control down, arrow down, and that'll give me the octave that I prefer. And then this one I need to go up. And this is where my double bar line was supposed to be, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Make sure, I'm gonna press Escape to get out of the note entry mode. All right, and now I'm halfway through. And that is the quickest way to enter notes with a computer keyboard. There are two things you need to do. Select the number, depending on the rhythmic value that you prefer, and those are seen here as you hover over the rhythmic tool, and then the letter that you prefer. So, two keyboard strokes, the number and the letter, using your keyboard, your computer keyboard. Okay, creating tuplets. This portion of the video, we're going to create those quarter note triplets um, and any of those special characters that we didn't cover to fill out the remainder of our lead sheet. So I've got quarter note triplets in my second full measure of my composition or my lead sheet, and I'm gonna go there now. So to create tuplets, you click on the representative rest and since my quarter note triplets take the place of two beats, this half rest is gonna do. Once you click on the rest, you will click Control-3, and that should give me my quarter note triplets. And all I have to do, since it's highlighted, I'm gonna enter the notes that I need, my pitches, using the keyboard alphabet, F, E, F, and I'm done. I'm also gonna do that again one more time. It happens here in the second system. So I'm going to press escape, click on my representative rest, and then press control and three together. And that gives me, me my quarter note triplets. And then I simply press the letters that I need, B, A, B, and I'm done. Entering ties. So I did the first one here in the first measure, but there's so many. <laughs> so let's get started. In our third full measure, we have a tie. I'm going to click on this whole note, and you'll see in the icon you could do this and just press this tool, and that'll give me the tie. 
Another way to do it is to click on the note again. This part is the same. And you saw in the tool icon when you hover, it has a plus in the parentheses. So I'm going to use that keyboard sh shortcut and just press plus and that gives me the same thing. As I scroll through, I've got another tie here, so I'm going to do that. And you can just click or scroll through as I am. <laughs> All right, and that is our first half of our lead sheet. Okay, we are almost there. We are entering chords now. And you'll notice that I haven't filled in the remainder of the lead sheet. Um, it's because I'm going to use the copy and paste tool. So let's get started with our chords. You're going to click on the note in the measure where you want your chord to be. And then once I've clicked on this and it's highlighted, I'm going to press Control K. And the reason why I know it's Control K is right here under add we're going to go under text and you can see that the chord symbol is control k so yes i could have done that as well click on that the first note where i want that chord add text and you can see that it is also you're able to uh, select it from this tool so the add menu text and then chord symbol and I'm there and then I can just start typing away so E flat 6 and it plays the chord F minor 7 and we can just go through now I want to remind you oh, let me click on this do it again control K <laughs> um, in our book the M's by itself are supposed to be minor okay I just like to see it as M I N I think it's a lot more clear and the slashes so here this is B flat minor 7 slash it's just like the forward slash a flat and then we can just go through and the process is pretty fast especially if you're a quick typer and if you mess up just like I passed the note that I need. As soon as my mouse becomes available, I just need to click on the note where the chord is supposed to be. Right there. Control K, or I could have gone up to the menu, but as I mentioned earlier, I like to use the keyboard as much as I can because there is more range of motion there and less risk of carpal tunnel tension feelings. Okay, just a few more. Okay, now for sus, I just type in sus using computer keyboard. And now I'm halfway through. So I'm going to take this time now to copy and paste. So I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to select the measures that actually copy or repeat for the remainder. So I'm going to click on there. And I'm going to stop. I think it was right. Mm. Right here. Okay. So I just pressed. Let me do that again. I clicked on the first measure. And then I click on the last measure. Pressing shift plus click. And now I have my section selected. I'm going to use using the keyboard control C for copy. Click on the measure where I want to start and press control V for paste. And now I've got it all filled in. I just need to fill in some um, here. And then we're almost done. Okay, to enter lyrics, it's very similar to entering chords. We are going to click on the first note that we want lyrics and then go to the add 
menu at the top and we're going to down to text and press uh, select lyrics just so you know you can also click on the note that you want and press Control L and then that text box comes up like it did for the chords and then you just start typing away so oops let's go back just now you just keep going from word to word using the space bar you could also use a dash like I just did here at this instance space bar and then you can quickly enter your lyrics in. All right, this is our final product. We did go back to the top and added some text and wrote in walking ballad. And this is it. So I'm gonna show you now the last step is to transpose. So this was the original that I found the lead sheet in. I'm going to uh, select everything and then go to tools, the tool menu, and click on transpose. And here I can transpose to any key, my optimal key, and in this case it was D flat. I'm going to select it here from the menu. Okay. And I want to make sure that I know where it's going. I don't want it up too high where I'm reading ledger lines. I do want it to go down. So I'm going to click that there. And that's how I want to transpose. I want everything transposed, including the key sig and the chords. So I press OK. And now I have it in my very own optimal key. And here, and that's one of the advantages of using music notation software. If at a later time that I find out I don't like this key, I can always transpose it to another key and also share it with friends. MuseScore has a free community platform where you can share and download scores so um, they can take this as well if they've got the program and download it to their key. And here's the beauty of using music notation, this playback option. And there is a tutorial for making your basic lead sheet using MuseScore. And we are down to our last step, adding the introduction and the outro. It's always a good idea to get the main contents of the lead sheet into the program as introductions and outros are easier to add. We'll be starting with the introduction. Since we have a pickup bar, I want four bars, so I'm going to get rid of this pickup bar, press Control delete then select the first measure because I'm going to be inserting four measures. I'm going to go to my Add menu, my Add tool, go down to Measures, and I'm going to insert measures and select four. Right. I'm going to select the fourth measure because that is the end of my first system that I want a clear break. So I'm going to select that fourth measure, press enter, and that, that'll give me the formatting that I want. Since I'm in this measure, I'm going to make this a double bar line, which is already selected here. And now my formatting looks good. Now, standard four bar intros are usually the last four bars of the tune. And we will be doing that with this particular tune. So I'm going to select the last four measures. I'm going to click on the first bar and press, press shift and click on the mouse so I can have all four measures selected. And I'm going to do my keyboard shortcuts. Control C. Click on that first measure. Control V. 
Okay. So now I've got the last four measures in the first four measures where I want it. So I need to do a little bit of housekeeping here and clean up. So I'm just going to select all of these with my trusty tool, note tool, and I've selected that. And I'm just going to go through and just kind of clean up. And if you make a mistake, you can always press Control Z. Alrighty. I do want these cords. I'm going to start with the cords first. And I'm going to go and change this. So I'm going to select this. Actually, let's go ahead and do this. There we go. I selected the measure and just pressed delete to get rid of those extra. And I kind of just want to start clean. Click on this and I'm going to add a chord symbol. You can see under the add menu, under text, there's chord symbol and the keyboard shortcut is control K. E flat minor seven and then I just type away an A flat 7. I know it does say sus, but that's just a nice way to give a little bit more harmonic movement there. Okay, and then D flat 6 was that last one. And then I need to get back into the tune. So I'm just going to do a 2-5. All right. Okay and then we're into the tune. We'll fix that in just a little bit. Now, I need to go back and do some slashes here. Actually, we're just going to do the first three. There's a reason why. And we're going to go under the Tools menu at the top, and I'm just going to select Fill with Slashes. Great. Now here, I'm going to quickly change this to a half note rest. There we go. I'm wondering if this will work. I can try this. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> ah. Okay, let's see if this will work. Oh, cool. Okay, so what I did was basically, let me do that again. So originally I had a whole rest in that measure, but I want to break it up because I have a pickup into the melody on beats three and four quarter notes. So I need to break this bar up. So I selected this whole rest, and then I'm going to, and I have the rest uh, icon here selected and I'm going to press half rest and that way it'll split it up and therefore I can do half slashes and then half uh, notes. Then I'm going to go to my tools bar menu, select fill with slashes. I forgot to select the measure. I select that measure Go to my Tools menu and select Fill with Slashes. Okay? So then it fills the whole bar. Not to worry, as I found out just now. <laughs> if you select the particular beat that you want, there is a quarter note uh, rhythm that is selected already. That's exactly what I need. So I'm going to press A and that's the wrong one. So I'm going to go back and then press control arrow down, which is our keyboard shortcut for octave displacement. And I'm going to do the same here, but the opposite. I selected that low A 
press control. It was down there. I'm going to press control, arrow up, and that gives me that high A flat that I want. Since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and add lyrics. Okay, so just to remind you, I've selected the note, and you could still go up here and uh, click on the Add menu and go to Text and select Lyrics. But by this point, you are already using keyboard shortcuts, so all that you would need to do is select the note and press Control L, and that'll give you the box, the text box to type your lyric in. I just press spacebar and it gets me to the next note, and I'm good to go. And there's your four bar intro. I'm going to do a little bit more formatting. I'm going to add here some text. We're going to go to rehearsal mark. The keyboard shortcut for that is control M. Oh, let's make sure that I select the note. Let's try that keyboard shortcut now. Control M, and that gives me the text box. And that gives me where I need to type in letter A. The next rehearsal mark that I need is down here where I had marked the double bar for the second half of the tune. I'm going to click on that note, press Control M, it gives me the text box, and I'll put in B. All right. Now we're going to move on to our ending. We're going to do a standard four bar tag ending. In jazz, the last four bars are usually repeated a total of three times. So I'm going to make the, sh the sheet read that way. The easiest way for now is to do it this way. Since a lead sheet is a representation of the overall architecture or form of the tune. This form can be repeated as many times as needed to accommodate solos and the like, but we just need a clear cut guide or path, a direction to know when, if this is the last time that we're going to play the melody and we're going to go head out, I need to know where to go or direct the musicians when I want to show them where I want to end. And usually, it's the last four bars repeated three times. So, is a love nest you can call home. This last four measures is what I want repeated a total of three times. Okay, so to avoid any confusion, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to make sure that they know that I just want this repeated four times, so I'm going to do it this way. First of all, let's go back here. I've selected this measure, and I'm just going to put a double bar line instead of that final bar line, which would indicate that that's the end. Let's fix this up a little bit. I'm going to select this and give them some chords, a turnaround to get back to, the, uh, to letter A. So I've selected that, and I'm just going to press Control K. That gives me my chord text box. E flat minor seven. I'm just going to do a simple turn around to five, back into D flat major. Make sure I save this. Intro and outro. Alrighty, so let's go back. And I just need this repeated a total of 12 times if I'm going to use a separate line, and you'll see what I, I do here. So I need to make sure that I'm adding 12 measures, so I'm going to do that now.
and cut. Tag ending. For this particular tune, I only want to repeat the last four bars twice, where it basically reads this way. On my head out, I want to be able to go to better than a palace with a gilded dome, is a loveness you can call home, and then repeat that again, is a loveness you can call home. I only really want the last four measures repeated once, so a total of two times. So to avoid any confusion, I'm just going to write that out separately down here. So the way to do that is to add measures. So I'm going to add measures this way. I'm going to go to append and I want a total of eight, maybe nine. We'll see. We can always delete later. Okay, so we've got a formatting issue. I want to click on the last measure that I want to stay on this line and then press enter and that will give me that nice formatting that I want. I'm also gonna do that here and see if we need to change any of that. Okay. So let's go ahead and highlight this, last four measures, control C, copy, and then I'll do it again. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. I did that twice. I'm going to go back over here and put some direction as to where I want the ending to start. So, better than a palace with a gilded dome is A, I want to go to my tag ending. Instead of having to cue like, okay, let's repeat this again, let's repeat this again. If I really want a hard ending and only want to repeat that twice, this is what I would do. Click on the note. I'm going to add text and we're going to call this rehearsal mark because this gives me the text box at the top of the staff where I want that to be visible. Okay. And I can even move it. When I grab it, it gives me that little toggle as where to move it. I'm going to put it right there. Okay. So this is this is mark these are markings performance practice that jazz musicians know there isn't a DC we just always go back to the beginning of the head unless otherwise directed but we're just using this to code assign to just cue that ending that I want right so there's that with a golden dome is a and then I want to go right here to the second line so I'm going to do that again, select, and then press Control M, and it'll always remind you, you need to select a note, Control M, and then that will give me that, which I need. So let's go ahead and look at that road map. Better than a palace with a golden dome, and this is my last time, so I want to go to the end is a loveness you can call home is a loveness you can call home all right so i just need to fix a little bit of these chords now i don't want to end on the tonic here i'm going to do some turnarounds real quick and change these chords how about we get rid of that one first i just selected it and press delete and it goes away Okay, and depending on what you want to sing there, but just to show a different note to show that it's not ending. And I'm going to do a simple turnaround here. Okay, so I went to the minor six. 
And then, since I want to get into E flat minor, I'm going to use the five of that. So basically, two, five, one into E flat minor. Control K. Okay. How about I use an actual five? <laughs> Let's go back. Control K. There we go. Alrighty. Then we've got this. I do want to add just a little bit of a couple things. I'd like to go and resolve here. And then we're just going to end there. These chords, I just want to end straight on the tonic. And then I'll do a quick fermata just to show that we're done. And we didn't need this measure at all. So I'm going to select it, press Control Delete, and that should take care of that problem. Okay. And there we go. I'm going to go ahead and just fill these with slashes just so it doesn't look like it's. I do want to rest there just to show that time is still going, that chord is still occurring. And then here we're just going to put real quickly down here just to show that it was, there we go, held over. Alrighty. And usually we would do rhythmic uh, notation, a whole note there, but this is good for now. And it's now complete. Our lead sheet in our optimal key with a standard four bar intro and a very common four bar repeated tag ending. <laughs>